Well, hello and welcome to Reginald ESQ. I'm Underhook and this is my review of the Swedish Tier 3 tank destroyer, the IKV-72. So is it any good? Yes, it's really good. I quite like it. It actually looks like a tank destroyer, not like that Tier 2 thing. It looks like a motorbike that somebody's put a gun machine gun on. No, no. This actually looks like a tank destroyer. It is open top though, so of course... Uh, having very poor armor and being open top means HE shells will blow you to bits. But uh, it is actually quite a good performing tank destroyer for its tier. Packs a bit of a, a punch and uh, yeah, has some has some real advantages. Actually, what I'll do is if I just quickly uh, have a look at the comparison for this tank, it'll give you a bit of an idea of why it's good. So I'm comparing here to all the other tank destroyers in tier three, except for the premium ones. I don't put the premium ones on. Uh, basically. Where is it strong? Well, the gun is is good. Uh, average damage of 110 per shot is pretty much at the upper limit. Like that's the the, the Marder also does 110 per shot. The others are all around 75, 85, except of course for the Valentine AT, which is 370 because it's using HE. But HE has big disadvantages too in, in long aim times and long reloads and all that. So it's a bit of a different thing. But as far as a standard AP ammo, it's as good as any of the others. Now. The uh, penetration of 97 is uh, not as good as any of the others, ex with the exception of Valentine's Day, because that's using HE, but the others all have 100 uh, and 8 as the lowest, and it goes up to 112. This guy only has 97 penetration. But at Tier 3, 97 pins is not a problem. Even against most Tier 4s, it's not a problem. It does become a problem against Tier 5s, it becomes a bit of a major problem. But uh, in general, I found it not too bad. But that is the weakness, I guess, compared to the others, is the lower penetration of this tank. Um, the other thing to note is it's excellent. It has 12 degrees of gun depression, which is great for fighting on hills. That is the best in class. The next best is the Marta with minus 8, and that is my minimum for hill fighting. The others are all terrible. So as far as hill fighting goes, it's the Marta, or it's the IKV-72, and the IKV is much better at it than the Marta. So great for fighting on hills, just popping over a hill, taking a shot. The gun is fairly close to the top of the tank, so it does do that very well. As far as the gun traverse, that's the side-to-side -side movement of the gun, which is another big feature of tank destroyers. It's not very good. It's 10 degrees, which is pretty terrible. The uh, UE57 is the worst with 7 degrees, and that is horrible to drive. The best is the Marta with uh, 32 on one side and 25 on the other. It's The Marta is very good traverse. The others are all pretty bad, and the IKV is the second worst. Of them. So that is a disadvantage. It means you have to move your tracks more often uh, to get on target. So speaking of that then, what about the track traverse? Is the track traverse uh, good, or is it not so good? Well, the track traverse on this is 37.94, say 38 degrees a second. Thankfully, that's not bad. It's not the best. The best is the uh, Russian SU-76M, but 37.04 is not bad at this tier. So it's, at least it's not a slug. It can actually adjust aim fairly quickly with that. Speaking of aim, aiming time is 2.21. is fairly slow for a gun like this. Uh, the best is 1.92 on a UE-57, and the worst is, of course, 2.5 on the Valentine because it's firing uh, HE shells. Uh, hit point wise, 150 hit points is low, but all tank destroyers are pretty low. The best is the Valentine, A tier 170. Armor, uh, non existent. 18 at the front, 7 on the sides, 12 on the rear. It's terrible. The only ones that have any armor is the Marta has a bit of armor at the front, and so does the T56 GMC. Uh, they have enough armor at the front, oh, and of course the Valentine AT is very well armored with 60 all around. But these two guys here have enough armor to bounce sort of multi-cannons and things off the front from tier 2 and tier 3 multi-cannons. Uh, but that's about it. All the others, uh, except for the Valentine AT, are basically dead in the water if they get hit. Uh, Mobility-wise, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, in fact, it's the fastest tank destroyer in its class at 57 kilometers per hour. I don't know if it actually does 57, but it is pretty mobile, does go pretty well, and has 20 in reverse. Reverse speed, very important for tank destroyers because you want to be able to reverse back out of trouble um, fairly often. So it is the only one with 20. The next best is the uh, T-56 GMC with only uh, 14. So 20 is a big advantage. Having a look now, concealment is the best in class, and it's quite a bit better than the others. Here we can see it says 31.59. And the next best is 28.85 here on the UE. And the UE is a tiny tank destroyer. So I don't know how we get better camouflage than the UE-57. The UE-57 really does look like a, 
motorbike that someone's put a shroud over. So I don't know how it has better camouflage than that, but it does. Maybe it's got some special Swedish herbs on it or something that give it better camouflage. I don't know. And uh, even its moving camouflage is pretty darn good. So uh, the spotting range is terrible, though, with 297. Uh, the worst in class, so you do have to rely on other people to do spotting for you, but concealment is good. So basically you've got good concealment, good speed, um, covered with great gun depression, and a reasonably uh, effective gun. Make this a good tank destroyer in its class. I won't talk uh, too much more about it, other than we will just maybe have a quick look at the gun. Actually, I'll do it in here. The... Um, the first gun is just basically a weaker version of this second gun, so there's no point really looking at it. You won't want to stick with that gun for very long if you can help it. Uh, obviously, engine tracks are all things you want to do. The radio, I think I was able to upgrade straight away. Uh, it was ready to upgrade straight away, and it is lighter than the original radio, so it's something you want to upgrade straight away anyway, and I'm pretty sure the engine and gun, you had to get the tracks first. All right, so this gun, yeah, 12.5 rate of fire, which is not bad. 97 pin, as we spoke about, not that good for this uh, particular class, but it's adequate except for tier 5. 110 damage is really good. 0.39 accuracy, yeah, not great. 2.1 second aim time, not bad. All right, so I think now we're about ready to get into some gameplay. Now, during the gameplay, you will hear from uh, a new mod I have created myself. It's called Tank Advisor. And it uh, basically chimes in and gives you uh, strategic tactical advice at times uh, when it's needed. I'm working on the AI a little bit of it and tweaking it, but you might hear that come in during the game. If you do want to uh, get hold of a copy of it, uh, it's in alpha at the moment, but it is available by sending $10,000 to my bank account in the Cayman Islands. I'll uh, let you know more about it later on. Anyway, let's get into some gameplay. Alrighty then, so here we go. The, uh, unfortunately for us it's a tier 5 game, um, the enemy team has about half their tanks are tier 5s. So I'm moving up to the bush here to um, get ready to shoot any tanks coming up the uh, hill, trying to get up to the middle there. Um, our tanks will hopefully rush up there in a minute. I've got pretty close to the bush so I can see through, so hopefully I'll be able to spot anything uh, coming over the hill before our tanks get there, but probably, probably I won't be able to. Um, but our tanks are there now anyway, so hopefully they'll spot something and we'll get some shots off soon. This is your tank advisor. You are closer than 15 meters to the bush. This means if you fire your gun, you may be spotted by the enemy and have your head blown off. Well, thank you, Tank Advisor. That was my uh, new uh, modification for World of Tanks. Tank Advisor giving me some advice there that I should be 15 meters behind the bush because if I fire my gun, I could be spotted. That's really good advice. Thank you, Tank Advisor. Well worth the $10,000 investment. Now, is in alpha. It is in alpha. I realize the voice isn't great, um, but uh, I did hire a professional voice actor for that. But, uh, well, you know, ooh, we've got a target. We've got a target. I missed. Hit the wall, unfortunately. Um, and according to Tank Inspector, I may, uh, according to Tank Advisor, sorry, I may well have been spotted just then when I did it. Great little program, and I suggest you all invest in it, uh, and just send the money to my address in the Cayman Islands, and uh, the uh, you, you'll get a downloaded key. Oh, we've been hit. We've been hit. How's that? I should have listened. I should have listened to Tank Advisor. If I'd listened to Tank Advisor, I would have moved 15 minutes behind the bush, I wouldn't have been spotted, and I would have been shot just then. So definitely worth the $10,000 investment. All right, so we've got, oh, Stug, Stug. We missed. We had a side shot on a Stug 4, and we missed. That sucks. Now, you will note I am 15 meters behind the bush now, which is why it appears solid. And we've got a hit on the KV-1. We must have hit him right in the front of the driver's plate. Um, I know the turret, you shouldn't shoot the turret of a KV-1 because it's the strongest part. But the bottom of his tank went behind cover, and I knew there was, so I shot at his turret, and bounced. Alright, so don't pick on me. Anyway, the best way to play a tank destroyer is 15 meters behind a bush. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to see the terrain, to know uh, whether or not you can hit a tank. But uh, I just blind fired there, hoping I might hit something. 
And uh, I also have camouflage net binoculars fitted. So they are only active while you're not moving. And I have repair kit fitting. I'm, I just went up until about tier 5, I just fit the free stuff. Oh, and my crew is not fully trained. In this game, they're probably about uh, 77, 78% trained, something like that. So, of course, the tank will perform a little bit better uh, when a fully trained crew is inside of it. And that's probably the same for most of my gameplay, the low tiers that you see. There is a Lux coming. I hope he doesn't get close enough to spot me uh, because I'll get lit up. I decided to move back a little bit. And I was getting ready to sort of run behind the rock, but he got blown up which is good for me. Panzer 4H, can we see you through the gap in a rock? Oh, we can, we can, we can, we can. Can we get a shot? No, he's moved. There are some gaps there at the top. A lot. Some players don't know that the gaps are there, and they just sort of drive around inside that area, like this Churchill, and boom, 100 points of damage. Thank you very much. That was a good hit. And yeah, you can get them, and they often they're surprised, and they... Uh, oh, here we go. Another spot, and we got him. 98, 96 points of damage. Great. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize you can get shot through there until they get shot. And, um, yeah. Anyway, um, they probably won't be that silly a second time. Although the Pence 4H was, but I think now he's running away. Pity, because uh, that's a tank we can penetrate fairly easily. The Churchill 1 Tier 5 heavy tank uh, can penetrate the sides, but probably not the front. Here we go. Stug 4 is nearly dead. Ah, oh, that hit went straight where I am. That was great. Oh, we've got a Marder now. Whoa! Now they did, I think if you ever watch my Marta 2 review, you'll see that uh, I think it was the Marta 2, uh, was, or the Marta was combined with the German tank called the Farka, and uh, the two tanks combined, uh, it, it became a name of a tank that I can't say here, but um, yeah, then they, they ended up just calling it Marta 2, because uh, the combined names of the Farka and the Marta tank just was unpalatable. Um, so I turned around, of course, because there's a KV-1 in the back, and if he crests the hill, uh, I'll get a shot on him, but also I'll probably get spotted. So we're waiting to see if he crests the hill. Here he comes, here he comes. No. Come on, I don't know if I'll be able to penetrate. I can penetrate the front sort of driver's plate, or the side of the tank, but that's probably about it. Or the rear, of course. If he comes over the front, I could aim for the driver's plate, but here we go, here, we, here he is. Can't get the driver's plate at this angle. We tracked him. Oh, yes. Of course, I meant to track him. And we've tracked him again. So, I'm keeping him tracked for my team. Yeah, yeah. Great play. Great play. Yeah. Okay, I, I was trying to penetrate his hull. But, it, it, hey, accidental tracking works just as well as meaningful tracking. Now, we are um, without targets, I think. Looking at the, the uh, other team, they have three artillery remaining they have a uh, Panzer 34 which is a light tank and they have an SU-76 which is a tank destroyer tier 3 which uh, we had a bit of a look at the stats didn't we and I can't remember anything about it at the moment so we're off I do remember it didn't have very good gun depression I think we're the ones with the good gun depression so if he's on a hill and we get close he might have trouble shooting down at us that's probably about the only advantage I can think of now, the grill here is being extremely aggressive for a artillery. I guess he's hoping he just runs into the other enemy artillery. I am going to use him as a decoy and basically follow him. So, if he gets spotted, because he's forward of me, he should get spotted first. And they should all aim at him. And then when they shoot him, they should all light up for me and I'll get to shoot them for free. That's my theory. Oh, I'm getting a bit too close to him. And, oh, that tree slowed me down. That was nice. So, uh, oh, there we are. Enemy artillery spotted. I don't know, probably spotted by him because I've got terrible view range as well. Lining up. Hopefully he's aiming at the other artillery. Nice hit. 114. That's good damage for this gun. And he actually aimed at me, the boss. He aimed at me. The cheek. Anyway, he's dead. Now, uh, I've probably been spotted. I see that there is a Panzer 34 up there and an artillery. I, what I'm going to do is try and uh, arc around and whichever one of them appears in my gun first, that's the one I'm going to shoot because I'm probably only going to get one shot before I get killed, I think. Anyway, let's see how it goes. Coming up, coming up, coming up. And where are they? Oh, a tank has been spotted. I see that tank on my left, but I'm going to go for this guy. The reason being... Ah, yeah, I thought that might happen. The reason I went for artillery was I thought that 
Well, not that I went for artillery. I went for the tank that I was originally going for in my mind because I knew it was stationary and I could aim at it and hit it. That guy, a moving target with terrible gun traverse on this thing, I thought, maybe I won't get a shot, maybe I won't hit him and he'll just blow me away and I won't do anything. That's why I went for the shot I went for. quite, And also, he was on full health. I wouldn't have been able to kill him with one shot. That all ran through my mind in that instant of a second, believe it or not. Um, and I made the decision to shoot the other guy. Um, don't know if it was the right decision or not, but uh, hey, it is what it is. Anyway, it looks like we're going to win. Alright, so that turned out to be a martial game, which is nice. Um, all thanks, I think, in part at least, to Tank Advisor, my new uh, mod for World of Tanks. Um, I don't... Uh, I'm not on Patreon, and I, my account is not monetized, so I think $10,000 for a worthwhile mod is quite a reasonable ask. Um, if you're a youngster and you want it, um, I've already asked your parents, and they said it was fine. Just send all the money to my bank account in the Cayman Islands, and uh, it'll be fine. So, yeah, a, uh, um, yeah, we did it right there. Let's have a look at the next screen. And uh, we finished on top four XP. Only just the Lux on our team did a pretty good job. Um, and the KV220 on our team did more damage. But then again, that is an absolute beast of a tank. Uh, how it even died, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so we did pretty good. And next screen, Aruni. We fired 17 shots, 11 of them hit. Accuracy isn't good, although it's good enough for me to think that if the crew was fully trained, the accuracy would probably be uh, quite acceptable. Uh, 11 of the shots hit, 8 of them penetrated. We did bounce. Uh, well, actually, I think when you hit the tracks, it counts as a penetration, doesn't it? So, yeah, I'm not sure that works out. Anyway, uh, 766 damage is pretty darn good, and uh, 219 of that was long range. We received one hit, which nearly killed us. That was a massive hit. That uh, Actually, we, hit, we received two hits. And one was splashed. Oh, maybe artillery hit us with that first one. Anyway, don't know. Um, but we got hit twice. Uh, vehicle spotted two. We damaged seven, destroying three. That's pretty good in this tier. Uh, 193 assistance damage as well. That probably was at the end there. And, uh, yeah, all in all, a good game. Thank you for watching my review of the Swedish Tier 3 Tank Destroyer, the IKV-72. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, subscribe. Have fun.